What about the commercially available eyelid scrubs? There are several products that are designed for that. I have some patients who really swear by them. And if they're tolerable, if they don't sting too much, if you can use it consistently and if it's helping you, by all means, go ahead and do it. I think of those, those sort of detergents as being uh, not instead of warmth, but in addition to. Because they, don't, they only are scrubbing the surface of the eye. And look at this. They're not going to get inside the eyelid where the problem is, where the bacteria is. There is no eye drop. Well, I, I, there is an eye drop now. Uh, that I'll show you in a minute that is, actually does get into those glands and treat the bacteria. Here's another thing you can take internally, flaxseed oil. Flaxseed oil works through, uh, through the, the production of the oils in these glands to thin the, the production of the oils. And uh, it's very safe. It is available over the counter without a prescription. It may cause you some gas when you start using it, so beware. You do need to have some caution if you are also taking Coumadin or some blood thinners. It can interfere with those, and so you need to ask your doctor to do an extra couple of checks of your prothrombin time to make sure that it's not adversely affecting your blood thinners. But that's a, that's a very useful thing that you can all take. So antibiotics are used frequently. We put a lot of patients on ointments because they linger on the surface of the eye. An antibiotic that we're, I'm starting to use more and more for this oil gland deficiency, it's called azacite. It's, it's, how many of you have heard of azithromycin, or z -Pak, the antibiotic called a z -Pak. Not too many of you. It's an antibiotic that's been around for many years, and now it's available in eye drop form. As an antibiotic, what made it unique is you don't need to take pills and pills and pills for many days. You take pills for, you know, I think, two pills the first day and then one pill for the next few days, and that's it. Azithromycin, the active ingredient of this drop, penetrates deeply into tissues, and so it works much more strongly and much more uh, duration of treatment with a single dose. And so we've used it this way, two drops for the first day, two drops for the second day, and then one drop for the next five days, and that's it. And then our patients stop, and then if need be, a month later, they can put themselves back on this uh, azocyte medication. And I've had many patients with oil, with meibomian deficiency who've had remarkable results using azocyte, who told me it's worked better than anything they've used. And so we're using it more and more now. It is a prescription item. All it does is reduce the bacteria, although there is some, there is some anti-inflammatory activity of the drug, we think. See, we're going to switch gears now to uh, deficiency of the watery part of our tears. And uh, we all know that uh, this is most common in women, particularly over age 40. It's associated with autoimmune disease and with another, uh, a number of, of uh, medical conditions and a number of medications. Rather than going into all that, let's talk about the best treatment. Which is the best artificial tear? It sustains a great product, and it's up on the screen. I, I don't particularly recommend any one artificial tear to my patients. I, off, I always feel sad when a patient tells me nothing works for me, and they've only ever used one or two types of artificial tear. I like to give away a sample of as many as I have samples of and let, our, let my patients try the different ones. So you need to experiment over time. You can put one in one eye and another in the other eye and see how they work. Because uh, only through that process will you find what really works best for you. They're not all created equal. Taking eye drops, how do we do it? Gosh, this is awfully important and often sort of missed. The best simple way to do it, even the picture on the screen is not perfect, is to pull down the lower eyelid and look upward. Make a pocket in the lower eyelid. Everybody see that? The pocket. And what happens is that that's your target. You want to aim and, and get one drop. You don't need any more than one drop, but it has to hit that target, go in that pocket. And then when you blink your eye, it will smooth out and it'll go all over the eye. Some people can't tell if the drop went in. A good way to tell is to refrigerate the drop. If you refrigerate the drop, then it feels cold and you know immediately that it went in your eyes. Same is true with glaucoma medications. Uh, refrigerated, it doesn't sting uh, and cause as much redness. Uh, remember, only one drop of any type of eye drop is more than, it more than fills your eyes. So if you use two drops, you're just wasting. And one other thing, some of my patients absolutely can't put tears in their own eyes at all. Here's another trick. It's not as good, but it, you can do this if you absolutely have to. Lie flat on your back, looking up uh, or looking straight toward the ceiling. Close your eye and let the, the drop fall and hit right here in the corner of your eye. When you then open your eye, it'll roll in. Okay, so if you're, not a, if you're one of those people who just can't 
can't stand to look at the bottle coming toward the eye, you can do that. Now remember, that's not as good because whatever's on your skin is going to mix with that eye drop and then roll into your eye as well. And that's not as sterile as, as putting it into your eye. But if it's the only way you can do it, you can do it that way. Wearing a certain type of eyeglass can help you treat your dry. Well, if you go outside and your eyes start to water, this is your best friend. Because the reason your eyes water when you go outside or when you're in the car and you've got the, air, the blower going is because your eyes are, there's more evaporation coming. The wind is drying your eyes out. And so they, what happens? They dry out and then it creates that reflex tearing that makes your eyes flood. Getting a pair of simple wraparound glasses is not only a great fashion statement, but it's also a good way to protect your eyes. And they don't need to be goggles. They don't need to fit against your face. They just need to have a little bit of wrap because that will help to, uh, to uh, reduce evaporation. Let's talk a little bit about tear plugs. Tear plugs are a very simple device designed to help your eyes retain more of the natural tears that you produce. They're made of a number of different kinds of material. They have a number of different designs. They're usually most commonly made of silicone, which is clear or white. Very hard to see when they're in, in your eyes. And this is, this is what they look like on the screen. You can tell that the overall dimension of these is not much more than one or two millimeters. So they're very tiny, and most of the plug itself is below the surface of the eyelid. Here's where they go. Remember the, the ducts that carry tears to your eyes. The two ducts that are, uh, you know, by the inner corner of your eye are the ones that carry these, uh, the tears away. And right here at the opening in the lower and in the upper eyelid is an opening called the punctum. And these tears plugs go inside those puncta to block them. And they go in and they stay in. Here's the, one, of, one of those puncta on the left looks like up close, and on the right is, is how the plug looks when it's in place. Of course, we're seeing it in cross-section. The only thing you'd see when you're looking at the eyelid is just a little white or clear circle sitting on the surface of that punctum. Usually they don't cause any irritation. Usually they don't uh, come out on their own, uh, and usually they'll stay in for good. They're meant to retain, help your eyes retain tears. And for many people with water tear deficiency, they help. Does this help with the oil deficiency problem we described? Not really. It really doesn't very much. Uh, you need to treat that with the treatments we talked about. It does increase the, the you know, if you've got isolated uh, oil deficiency, these don't help particularly well. But if you've got some combination of oil and water deficiency, they may help you because it's helping the water deficiency. 